Shakur Stevenson does a pound for pound list, puts Terrence Crawford and Canelo in the number one and two spots, along with some other people you might be interested in. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Vimo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working now. I got the Patreon up and running. We are back. Patreon is back. Full effect. I simplified it, revamped it, and it is much more direct. And I appreciate the people that have signed up. I'm going to be taking a lot of the live streams over to the Patreon and to my channel members, meaning that has to be the priority. It makes the most business sense. And, you know, I got to utilize the people that are helping that channel in that way with these long streams because, you know, I, I end up streaming. I don't even know how long it's going to be. So I got to make it make sense, especially during this this uh, Rona quarantine. Also, sign up for ESPN Plus below. The link is in the description box of all of my videos. You might need some content during this lockdown, stay at home, self-isolation. So get the ESPN Plus bundle. That's what we pushing. ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus, all three apps, $12.99 a month. Click on my link, use that link, get your quarantine on with some new content. And it does help the channel when you guys click that link. Now, Shakur Stevenson, he's moving up in weight to 130 pounds. I don't know when because we don't know when boxing will be back, but that is the next order of business. He's he's young and growing and he, he's always looked kind of big. He's always looked kind of big. So I don't know about if he can even make the weight anymore. You know, it could be something to that effect. You know, it could be something to that effect of, um, you know, just outgrowing the division and he can't get no big fights there. So he's looking for the next big things. This is Shakur Stevenson's pound for pound list. Before I get into it, he says, my first pound for pound list, what do you think? I think it's spot on. Shakur Stevenson says, in at number one, Terrence Crawford. Number two, he has Canelo Alvarez. Three, he has Vasily Lomachenko. Four, he has Tyson Fury. Five, he has Alexander Usyk. Six, he has Errol Spence Jr. Seven, he has Nayao Anui. Eight, he has Manny Pacquiao. Nine, Deontay DeBron Bomber Water. And in at number 10, another puncher, Arthur Better be of undefeated. Just beat Vodstick. Um, you know, I gotta say it's it's actually a solid list. I think the only thing that people would do, you know, if you're nitpicking, is argue the placement, you know, the actual number. See, this is why I, I, me personally, you never you have never I've been the channel for so long in this boxing game. And you have never seen me make like no top 10 pound for pound. I ain't, I, me personally, to each his own, you know, I'm, this is not directed to Shakur Stevenson or anybody who does participate in. I don't really do all this. You know, I don't really do the pound for pound. I could talk about someone else's list and, and determine if, you know, if it seems legit or not, but I don't even waste my time because it's all subjective. And, you know, there's no, it's like the Nas song. He said, who's the best Nas pocket big ain't no best, you know? It's, it's, there's no way to really quantify it. Some people feel heavyweight should be excluded. Other people not going to like your pick. Some people are racist, so they don't want to see, you know, your pick. You know, like this list has Terrence Crawford, a black fighter, before Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko. Some people ain't going to like that. Some people go with their emotion, personal feelings. So, you know, I don't even waste my time. And it would, it would always be forever changing. But shout out to Shakur Stevenson. I will say from viewing his list, it's actually a solid list, the names. You know, there's no one that I can see because back in the day, ESPN, they would do list, pound for pound list. I'm like, how is this person even on the pound for pound list? Like even Nayao Anui now on the pound for pound, he just beat Donaire and won the World Boxing Super Series. Okay, cool. But they were putting Nayao Anui before the World Boxing Super Series, before he was even in that. You know, they was putting him in, in at number six and seven, eight. And so I'm like... He, he's dope and i've been checking for him for a while and then they try to you know the racists and old media they try to use like oh you just don't know the small weight classes no i've been checking for him but it's like how come all the time when there's black fighters like charlo errol spence and crawford people always question 
what have they done who have they beat this don't make sense they need to beat this guy knowing that a lot of these fighters that i just mentioned are all pursuing the the best of challenge and the greatest of challenge but can't get it for network promotional size of the street issues you know person don't want to fight him franchise champion all that type of stuff you know politics more or less you know and you know some people they put roman chocolatito number one he is never he's 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 nice but he's more offensive than anything he's not a complete fighter he's done great things for his career you know i really liked his last performance against cal yaffe but who was that you know what i'm saying like cal yaffe who's he done just because eddie hearn you know bigs him up and all that like i just people's lists be crazy but i will say shakur stevenson the young man has a very solid list um i seen people were complaining on some people saying hey canelo's number one and not terence crawford that's debatable um and to his credit shakur stevenson said in the comment section that number one and number two crawford and canelo are pretty interchangeable but my thing is this i want to give you guys some insight because that's what i do don't let like people let big names and like what mainstream media says fool you canelo alvarez is a terrific fighter he's been in the game since 15 as a pro he's been kicking ass and taking names but you can make an argument that crawford is a pound for pound above him depending on what pound for pound represents to you are we going off of see that's what i'm saying it's all subjective but it's not out of the question here's here's an example when when we're talking about Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, they're both great fighters. We know that. But in my opinion, Crawford, if we're talking about pound for pound, like what does that mean to you? Does it mean like, is it just how heavily are we weighing resume versus skill set versus performances, et cetera? Because if we're talking about pound for pound, because my kind of overall understanding of the pound for pound list would be if you could take this person's attributes their style their pizzazz their attitude their jab their combination punching their power um their ring iq and if they were mythically able to like you can genetically engineer them and put terence crawford at 130 135 140 147 all the way up to heavyweight you know all these divisions where would he be using what he is so if that's what we're going off of then Terrence Crawford, I would put him above Canelo for that reason, because Crawford has showed much more separation in his biggest fights and his wins than Canelo Alvarez. But Canelo being the A side, you can make an argument for him because he's an A side. He's been a cash cow for a while and he's a popular fighter. So he was able to get the fights when he wanted them to show and prove so therefore he has a, a very good resume he has one of the best resumes sub 30 uh, you know i think he's about he's uh, he's just he's late 20s early 30s whatever right so he had under 30 crew or you know young 30 33 or under crew canelo has bar none one of the best resumes in that class but it's it's kind of hard to quantify and do this compare and contrast because he also was promoted well he also had you know a look and a brand and fought on mayweather undercards to help build him up so these different things whether you guys understand or, or not they help you because canelo can pretty much he could if he wanted to fight charlo next the fight could happen you know with a reasonable offer if he wanted to fight andre next it could happen if he wanted caleb plant with reasonable time to prepare on an even playing field drug testing all that it could happen versus crawford He's not in the same boat. You know, he's a terrific fighter, but he's not in the same. Everybody he's calling out, I think he genuinely will fight, you know, Errol Spence. But the politics are getting in the way. So it's not like Crawford could just say, hey, I want to fight Errol Spence, make it happen tomorrow. I want to fight. I'm fighting Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia. These are all the names that would that would, you know, bolster his resume even more. Or if they actually made the Pacquiao fight when they were both with top rank. So, you know, it kind of depends on what you're looking at. Uh, you know, me, I'm not really mad. I like Canelo and I like Crawford. So I'm not really mad who you put in the one and two spots. I I do think that Shakur Stevenson's list is a thousand times better than anything that I've really seen in recent memory from ESPN. 
because ESPN was telling you Lomachenko was the number one. I don't even think Lomachenko has enough fights to even be considered, you know, really the number one. Lomachenko is a good fighter, but how is a, a dude with 15, 16 fights and a loss, how is he, how has he done more than Canelo, who got 50 some fights, <laughs> you know, and fought Austin Trout, fought Mayweather, beat Cotto to me decisively beat Golovkin in the second fight decisively fought Golovkin twice you know beat knocked out Kovalev you know it's just it don't even make sense Lomachenko ain't never fought no name name Lomachenko's Mayweather name Lomachenko's Kovalev name Lomachenko's two fights with the Golovkin-esque person name Canelo versus Jacobs bro he just Canelo got too many bodies Lomachenko Canelo got more big names than Lomachenko has fights I, I, if I really, if I looked at the names of Canelo, because I, okay, two Golovkin fights, that's two. You got names like Kovalev, that's three. Austin Trout, Floyd Mayweather, Angulo at the time, Edison Lada, Danny Jacob. I'm already up to eight. Miguel Cotto, that's nine, right? You can even say Jose Cito Lopez, he's still relevant. Right now, he just looked good versus John Molina Jr. That's 10 people right now. I could keep going, you know? That's not even including legends like Shane Mosley, a definite Hall of Famer. That's uh, that's 11, right? That's uh, that's almost the same amount, <laughs> amount of fights that Lomachenko has. There's no way Lomachenko's number one. So I don't care if you put Canelo. I don't care if you put Terrence Crawford. But all I do know is it ain't even Lomachenko. It's not Lomachenko. That's what I do know. I don't even know if he gets past Teofimo, to be real. Uh, Tyson Fury, you know, I'm not mad at him being on the list. He beat Wilder. Okay, cool. You know, Wilder. He beat Wilder and Klitschko, two guys who had title reigns with long defenses. Okay, so him on the list, not bad. I actually, um, I really think Usyk would be over Lomachenko, to be honest. Because Usyk was, won the World Ali Trophy and was undisputed and then destroyed Tony Bellew, who's a, you know, who had two wins over David Hay. So I would say even Usyk would be over that because that, to me, is doing more. Lomachenko never had more than one belt until he went to lightweight right until he went to 135 he never had more than one belt at one time and the guys he went through to get belts a lot of them you know like rocky martinez bro this was after mikey garcia that was like mikey garcia leftovers and then getting to lightweight and getting all these belts he didn't have to go through no one the best that he came in the lightweight division at the right time because the best talent in the lightweight division at the time was him and a bunch of young cats devin haney tank davis wasn't even there but he's there now uh, Ryan Garcia and Teofimo Lopez. Those were the literally the best lightweight names that were in the division. And they were still getting seasoned and, and getting their bars up and the Devin Haney's and stuff. They were still, you know, so sowing their Royal Oats and, um, you know, just fighting and, and on their path. So we knew the Lomachenko fight wasn't going to happen with Devin Haney when Devin Haney had 15 fights or something. You, you see what I'm saying? So, Teofimo's absolutely the best fight Lomachenko has had in a very long time since probably Gary Russell Jr. So, you know, it just old media, they they just want so bad. Um, you know, and I'm not going to go through this whole list, but Errol Spence, um, I will put him over Lomachenko. You know, he look, Errol Spence looks harder to beat than Lomachenko. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand what people's pound for pound list is. Like, I don't understand what people or what are we ranking? Because you can't rank somebody pound for pound in pro boxing based on two gold medals in the amateurs. So to me, Errol Spence looks harder to beat. You know, God, God willing that he's the same fighter since the accident. If he, if he shows up in shape like he's been doing and, you know, the Mike, like the Mikey Garcia perform, Mikey Garcia just beat a former champion, Jesse Vargas. Right. And. He beat Sergey Limp Lipinitz, who just stopped Lamont Peterson and sent him to retirement, and he was a champion. He beat guys that Lomachenko beat, you know, uh, before Lomachenko, like Rocky Martinez, and he even beat Orlando Salido, who beat Lomachenko, right? And Errol Spence dog walk, and uh, you know I don't care. Mikey called out Errol, and Errol dog walked and won twelve rounds out of twelve. So what are we talking about? You know, that's what I'm saying. And then, I, like I said, I'm not going through this whole list, but um, it's solid. Neo Anui, I really like him. So 
he should be somewhere on the list. Uh, Pacquiao, legend, somewhere on the list. And see, that's the other thing that makes these pound for pound lists hard. I mean, clearly Pacquiao's done more than Usyk and Lomachenko and stuff. Pacquiao got 70 plus fights, you know, and fought the Mayweather, Bradley three times, um, Juan Manuel Marquez four times, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera twice, uh, Eric Morales three times, knocked him out two times out of the three. David Diaz knocked out Ricky Hatton, knocked out Miguel Cotto, you know, so Pacquiao, if we were being, and he really should have beat Jeff Horn, you know, in my opinion. So it's like, how do you, how do you gaze that? He has so many years in the game and so many great wins and Oscar De La Hoya knockouts and performances that is like, how can he even be behind Usyk? I mean, even if we're going, or Lomachenko, how is he behind any of them? Because if we're going off recent performances, he beat Broner thoroughly and he beat Keith Thurman thoroughly. So it's like, how is he how is Pacquiao trailing the list? You know, so there's there's a couple things. It's a solid list. You know, it's a solid list, like the names mostly. But you can definitely argue the, the placements of some of the guys. But let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. That is Shakur Stevenson's pound for pound list. Uh, drop your thoughts and let me know you know what you agree with what you disagree with maybe even make your own pound for pound list top five top ten in that comment section sign up for espn plus bundle also go over to the patreon that's where i'm going to conduct a lot of the live streams or become a channel member we working so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing